down the music so I can hear you. What did you say? Um, I think you'd be okay. Page 13. service, you have our hearts, you yes. have our spirits, you have our minds. Take us further. Take us higher in understanding. Do downloads today. Literal downloads like flash drives. God's flash drive. That we don't lose it. We don't lose it. You are a God who heals. You are a God who healed the past tense. We take it and receive it. Just like last night we were talking about the violent, the violent take it by force. You will not come in 
into this church and touch one more person. We resist the spirit of affliction. The spirit of affliction moves from place to place in our body. That's what it wants to do. And it wants to do it stealthily where we don't catch it. God, make us incredibly sensitive to what is being invaded in our bodies and our minds and our souls. There is healing taking place. 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 It is flooding this room. It is flooding this room. It is flooding this room with yourself, a presence that if you sit in it, you cannot come out the same. Glory to God. Make him pay for every single thing he has tried to steal. And by the way, by the way, restore to us what the canker worm has eaten away. Never again, never again, glory to God, those are glorious words, never again. We take the beach. We take those areas that we ignorantly dig. And we say, healing is here. Healing is here. It's not out there. It's here. The spirit of healing is here. Glory to God. It's invading every single part of our body. Glory to the living God. Pain can't stay. Wholeness. 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 I command the spirit of infirmity. I command the spirit of infirmity to go, never to return again, never to return again. Let it be said of this house right here, healing lives there. We decree a healing hub, a healing hub, a healing hub, and we will Absolutely not settle for anything less. Ephesus. Healing is meant to be received, not begged for. I decree and declare on every single one of us. Hallelujah. Praise you. We are receivers. We are believers. We are not beggars. We are receivers. We take our satellite in our heart and we turn it to stay under the spigot of more than enough healing, more than enough finances, more than enough wisdom, more than enough so that where we go, it flows. People get the overflow there's a spirit of weariness all over the world and we break your power and we receive the spirit of life this morning to walk out of this place empowered emboldened strengthened encouraged like we had never 
ever felt before. Draw who you will. But this house is a house of prayer and a house and a hub of healing in Jesus' mighty name. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This nice, crisp morning. Um, we're grateful we didn't get all the snow that we were supposed to get. Got enough, but didn't get what we ought to get. But, Father, we open this service today. Mm -hmm. We ask that you would go into the airwaves, everybody who's listening and who is not and is supposed to be, wake them up. Because you are going to walk into this place. We can sense you. We can feel you. We can expect miracles mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, because that's who you are. Soza, salvation, healing, prosperity, literally in our souls to be transformed. That's what we expect this morning. Praise you. Every single person who listens, every single person involved, be touched by the Holy Spirit and let it change you and your house and everybody you influence with a new power, a new boldness, a new strength in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Sandy. Praise you. And yes, we lift our hearts and we praise our almighty, holy God. I'm going to read Isaiah 5, 20 to 24. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter, Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe to men mighty at drinking wine. Woe to men valiant for mixing intoxicating drink. And I'll add drugs to that. Yeah. Who justify the wicked for a bribe and take away justice from the righteous man. Therefore, as the fire devours the stubble, and the flame consumes the chaff, mm -hmm. so their root will be as rottenness, and their blossom will ascend like dust. Thank you. Because they have rejected the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. And all this to pray for the mountain of education in the land of Israel. We praise you, Lord, for this mighty move that you are doing, Holy Spirit, in this country, in select states and locations that college and university students have had their hearts set on fire. And I know that this has happened in other countries. I am saying, I am decreeing that Holy Spirit is moving in the educational mountain in the whole nation of Israel. Colleges, universities, high schools, middle schools, grade schools, nursery schools and the hearts of the fathers will be turned to the children and the hearts of the children will be turned to the fathers and we praise you and we know that you are doing it because your word does not return to you void so however many angels it takes we send them Thank with you, your word you, in Jesus holy name yeah. amen 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 
Hallelujah. By the way, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Amen. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. 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 We have a mighty God, by the way. And he's inside of us. He's inside of us. We have a mighty God and he's inside of us. Hallelujah. Okay, we're going to pray for these people in Libya. Six traveling Christians abducted in Libya. They were kidnapped on the heels of the February 15th anniversary of the murders of 21 Egyptian Christians by the Islamic State ISIS. Six Christian men from the village of Al Althera South in Egypt traveled to Tripoli, Libya on a work trip and though they knew the risk, they did not expect to end their trip trapped in filthy room, starving to death. It began like any voyage. As our brother stepped off their plane in Libya, a, a driver picked them up and headed toward their place of employment. Christian solidarity worldwide shared that illegal checkpoint suspected to be manned by by the group ISIS, stopped their vehicle and abducted the men, taking them to an unknown location. Egyptian journalist Shuk Shukri has been keeping up with the story and reported that the terrorists demanded $15,000 in ransom from the victim's family. Of course, it's not as simple as these relatives as you might think. It's not as if they can pull 15,000 out of their savings accounts. They aren't wealthy and they have to sell their homes to come up with the kind, that kind of money. Mm -hmm. Sadrach, a brother and cousin to some of the victims had to have a lot to report to Shukri about the ongoing situation. Because of the high ransom, he asked the president of Egypt to intervene and meanwhile fears for their lives of his family members. Remarkably, Hannah was able to speak to his cousin, Shadrach, on the phone, who described their living quarters as a virtual living hell. Abdu, the five other Egyptians, and many other kidnapped victims from around the world are currently being held hostage in a small cramped space. Abdu to told his cousin that they are beaten daily and given almost nothing to eat. This incident happened just days ago, family. Right now, six of our brothers are waiting for some kind of miraculous rescue from a very grim situation. And they probably have no idea you are praying for them. Just at the last, just that last line was written, an image of the Apostle Peter came to mind. After searching the scriptures, we found a passage that might give life, energy, and hope to their prayers, to your prayers. Take a look at chapter 12 in the book of Acts. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. That's faith rest, by the way. Yeah, sure. That's faith rest. <laughs> Bound with two chains and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly, suddenly, oh, suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the south. And he struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said. And the chains fell off Peter's wrist. 
Peter was so stunned by these events that he didn't understand what was happening until the angel guided the apostle out of prison and out into the street. And where did Peter go? To the very house where many had gathered to pray for him. Imagine their surprise in finding the answer to their prayers outside the door. Actually, they thought the girl came and answered the door and said, Peter's at the door. He said, no, it's your ghost. It's Peter's ghost. That's how surprised they were. God answered their prayers. You might ask yourself, if God can do this today, when, then when, why even pray for these six men who love Jesus? Our answer to you is, why couldn't he do this today? Absolutely. He's the same. Yes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He wants to do these kinds of things. He wants to do incredible things. He's God, after all, at Global Christian Relief. We have seen miracles like this happen more than a few times. He can do whatever he wants to, and he wants to join him in this rescue by praying as one family for our brothers in chains. Thank you, God. So, Father, today we pray that you would break these men out of jail, yes, out of this, out of being in this, in this deplorable situation. Do a mighty miracle and sh and have an angel come and deliver these men, and also speak to their captive captors and have their captors be saved. That's right. For the glory of God. For the glory of God. We ask you to do that. Do it. Do it. Get these men out of prison and literally supernaturally lead these, lead these captors to salvation. We thank you for that. Hallelujah. Lord, cause us to understand who you are and how mighty you are. And when we pray, believing that we'll see the glory of God. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we were not able to do the Russian message for two or three weeks because we didn't have access to YouTube. And then last, uh, now there's two in a row two Fridays in a row, and last Friday's message, two days after the message, that would be Sunday, I think it was, I noticed there was already 91 views. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. So I wanted to read a couple, we got a couple of responses from that. Uh, Valentina Yakovenko. Mm -hmm. I'm very glad to be in fellowship with you again through listening to this sermon. Inspirational and encouraging tips and recommendations. My desire is for the Holy Spirit to help me feel and understand his actions in and through me. Mm -hmm. The vanity and worries of the day steal the special time of prayer, and I don't like it. My desire is to have more time with God. Pray for me. Thanks for the spiritual help. That's the first one. So, Lord, in Jesus' name, for Valentina and others like her. No doubt there's plenty more. In Jesus' name, Lord, we ask you to be so present with them and strengthening inside of them. Glory to God. Encouraging. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Praise God. So, in Jesus' name, we, we speak courage into them. An infusion of courage, peace, faith, rest, and special times, Thank you, Lord. opportunities where you visit them and they have encounters with you. Yes, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Next one is Alexandra Sidenko. She's very faithful to share with us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God we are together again. God is faithful. He wants to encourage and strengthen his people. 
Thank you for your faithfulness. We are always looking forward to meeting and fellowshipping with the Lord through these messages. I watch and listen to your services on Sundays too. Wow. When there is an opportunity for auto translation. And it is a joy to be present and praise the Lord with Michelle and with your sisters and brothers. Praise the Lord. We are one family, God's family. Amen. Amen. May the Lord keep you all. Thanks to Vadim for the translation. Thank you, Thank you. And this last one is from Nadezhda by Sheva. I am very glad to hear from you after the break. The Lord removes all obstacles in front of us. Glory to him with love, Nadezhda. So thank you, Lord, for these and others that they represent, that need to be fed. They're hungry. They're thirsty. They want intimate, personal fellowship with you. They want to be fed in the, by the Word of God. Thank you for that kind of hunger, Lord. Honor it and bless it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The battle belongs to the Lord. The heavenly armor will enter this land. The battle belongs to the Lord. Glory to God. No weapon that's formed us, formed against us, will stand. The battle belongs to the Lord. In heavenly armor will enter the land. The battle belongs to the Lord. No weapon that's fashioned against us will stand. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. When the power of darkness comes in like a flood, the battle belongs to the Lord. He's raised up a standard, the power of his blood. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. When your enemy presses in heart, do not fear. The battle belongs to the Lord. Take courage, my friend, your redemption is near. The battle belongs to the Lord. Sing it. We sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. Power and strength to the Lord. asked me to share about my voice. I never said anything about this. Uh, for three years, I have had to sing through a knot. Um, it's hard to explain, plus the back of my throat was bleeding, uh, and it would come and go and come and go. So I ended up having, I have a pretty large range in my voice. I can go low, I can go mid, I can go high. I lost all the mids and all the highs. And so um, I never really felt to voice it. That sounds funny. I never really felt to share it. Uh, I felt it was something the enemy had a plan for me 
to take it down little by little by little. And if he didn't, if he couldn't do it vocally, um, where he could shut it off, because I just go low and sing low or sing wherever I needed to sing to back up or harmonize or whatever it was. Um, but then he broke my heart and then it, it kind of created this knot. So every word I have spoken almost for the last three and a half years is through a knot. And all I can explain to you is it's a pressure that you're trying, believe it or not, trying to push out words. And I remember saying to him, just know when this is over, whatever I have to learn about healing, it's mine. This is not something God did. This is something that was a consistent assault on me. I said, let me just tell you something, though. First, I resist you. Second, I am healed by the blood of the Lamb. Glory to God. Glory to God. When we are taking communion every single solitary week, my decree for all of us is to get a revelation, a download of what communion is. The blood is access to the broken body and the benefits. Don't, Psalms 103, don't forget all my benefits. Who heals all your diseases, forgives all your iniquity. In Jesus' mighty name. Well, little by little by little, uh, when I needed to step into this spot, I've been in this spot before. I have led congregations. But for whatever God's reasons were, it was what it was. I got to the point where I believed more in the healing. I only asked one doctor, and he said, stop talking and stop singing. <laughs> okay. <I get> that. <laughs> That's good. And the Spirit said, don't listen to it. Keep walking and keep walking. Oh, I can't even encourage you enough. I am somebody for some reason. The manifestation is long. But in the meantime, I have learned how powerful your own voice is to your spirit. Mm -hmm. We can decree, decree and declare over you all you want. It's when your voice says to your body or your mind or your soul, I am whole right now. Right now. The language of faith is now. Well, as I worshiped and as I led, I almost said to God when Ed and Debbie moved on to what God is calling them, to do, um, I almost said to him, you do understand that every time I sing and every time I speak, it's painful. But I didn't. I said, every time I speak, my voice gets stronger. Every time I sing, my range increases. I can sing as low as a dove, like a feather, and I can break windows. So I want to encourage you, little by little, as I have led worship, my voice is stronger and stronger and stronger. The knot is smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And, smaller. and the other thing, when you go through something like that, know this, you come out with a higher anointing. Mm -hmm. Now, I used to say new level, new devil. And, and I would say it like this. And, and it absolutely is true. But I would say it like this. New level, hmm, new devil. Well, here's what I say now. 
new level, new opportunities, new blessings, new strength, new power, new glory, new deliverance, all of those things. Old, old are passed away. Behold, all things become new. This church has been challenged in many ways. I gotta tell you, if I could show you or tell you what God is saying to all of us, how proud he is of the fortitude, the integrity, the stick to it. The stick to it. Let that sink. He's watching. He saw it. And he is honoring us with an anointing, with a power, with a strength, with an impartation. And it only has just begun. Glory to God. Shout to the Lord all the earth. Hallelujah. Shout, my Savior, my Jesus, hold, hold, my Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you, all of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love, my comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength, let every breath, all that I have, never cease to worship you, shout to the Lord all the earth, Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy of the work of your hands for. Our God is an awesome God. Awesome God. He reigns. He reigns. Remember this all week long. He reigns in heaven and in earth. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. You're an awesome God. You're an awesome God. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy, Lord. You're holy. There's nobody like you. Nobody like you. Thank you, Lord. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. I am the God that healeth thee. I am the Lord your healer. I sent my word and I heal your disease. I am the Lord your healer. 
I want everybody that has trouble with their ears to put their own hands on their ears. In Jesus' mighty name, we speak perfect healing. We speak to the eardrum and we command you to function the way that you function. The canals, the every the amplifiers in your ears. The design to hear clearly and easily and effortlessly, we decree it. And we declare it to be so this self-same hour. Anybody who has trouble with their eyes, whether they're blurry, whether you need readers, whether you have different things that are weakening your eyes, I speak to eyes, the peripheral vision in Jesus' name. Open up like a screen. I command you to open up like a screen. Where there was darkness, there's light. Cataracts fall off in Jesus' mighty name. You're in the way. You're in the way. We cast you into the sea. Retinas to be strong. Send oxygen to eyes, God. Send oxygen to eyes. Glory to God. Glory to God. Backs are on God's heart. We speak to backs. In Jesus' name, this complicated spine, this glorious fashion spine, to hold us up and to have no pain whatsoever. The root, we go to the root and we cut, we take the axe and cut the root of pain in Jesus' mighty name because you are a God who heals and delivers and saves and we are believers and receivers and we thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your felt presence. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. I am the God that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. You are the God that healeth me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. You are the God that healed me. Receive it. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. Alleluia. 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 We love you, Jesus. 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 
We love you, Jesus. Glory to God. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you. Praise you, Praise you God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I've been thinking about this word this morning. Be loved. Believe it that you're beloved by the Lord. You're his beloved. Isn't that amazing? You're his beloved. We are his body, flesh and blood and bones. We're his body. We are his beloved. That's something that we need to meditate on, that we're his beloved, that he loves us. And if you have a question about it, Think about what he did for us yeah. on the cross. Yeah. He went and died for us so that we could be his beloved. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Let's praise God for that right now. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're your beloved. Hallelujah. We're your beloved. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your death on the cross. Thank you for what you did for us. Thank you for your blood. Thank you that we're new creatures in Christ. Brand new creatures in Christ. Hallelujah. All things are all things are passed away. All things have become new. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Give God a big clap offering. one thing. He's present to heal. He is present to heal. So we're going to pray for the offering. Lord, we pray that you would multiply this offering and bless it for the glory of God. And we thank you, Lord, that we can go into Russia and preach the gospel. It's amazing. It's amazing. And we're going to continue to do that and continue to go forward and to continue to see people get blessed and continue to see people get healed and the word of God will go marching into Russia. We thank you for that. Hallelujah. Bless this, bless this offering in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let your glory fill this house. Let your praises fill our hearts. As each vessel offers up to you the sacrifice of praise. You alone are holy. alone are worthy. You deserve the glory. Jesus, you alone, you alone Jesus, you alone. 
Jesus, you alone. Hallelujah. Praise you. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. God. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you. Michelle and I were talking last night. Praise you, Lord. We plan to have a prayer meeting. We take a cup of coffee upstairs. And, and um, Praise we, were, we were reviewing the last several years. And... and detected a pattern very quickly a pattern came out of that conversation yeah. and that had to do with the enemies reacting in tactics and and strategy. relentless mm -hmm. strategy but that's enough about him mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about him I don't want to talk about all his devices because 1 John 4.4, 4, the conclusion we came up with, and I want to share about it sometime soon. What does it really mean? The violent take it by force. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence. What we were talking about at first was the kingdom of heaven inside of us suffering violence. But that's not the end of the story. And the violent take it by force. Why? Because 1 John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Glory to God. There is a superior power. And it comes from the word. It's the only source that there is. The Holy Spirit and his word. That is the source of the of the power that is superior, that is greater than that of he that is in the world. John chapter 15. I'm going to start there. Verse 1. I am the true vine. Now we're just we're sitting here thinking of it this way. Jesus said, I am the true vine. Right now, Present tense, he is the true vine. Mm -hmm. That's a big vine. Mm -hmm. That vine is all over the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, God. It's got branches in every country, mm -hmm. every language, every ethnicity. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. That is a vine with a network that, that it covers the earth. When he said, I'm the true vine, that's us. And my father is the vine dresser. So think of ourselves as a branch, branches in that vine that is a network that covers the earth. Producing fruit all over the world. And the father is the vine dresser of that international vine that Jesus is. And we are. We are part of it. Verse 2. This is an unfortunate translation. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. That's not mm -hmm. true. That's not, that is not the appropriate Translation because it also means the same word take away. You remember when I, I shared about, uh, let's see, John, I think it was John 6. Yeah, the man at the pool of Bethesda. And Jesus said, Take up your bed and walk. And that Greek word was a, he a hero in the Greek, and it means take it up, lift it up. And take it away. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so the translation here is not is not adequate to take away. The primary translation is to lift up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that fits, that fits the vine dressing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. If you if you That's look true. at a vineyard, 
Mac and I were in Switzerland one time, way up high in the Alps, and the, you couldn't believe where these vineyards were. I mean, you had to, you had to like, it was scary walking down the steps of the hillside where all these rows of vines were. Yeah. And but there's wires over the tops of the plants. And if a vine, if a branch isn't bearing fruit because it's falling down and it, and it can be trampled on by foxes or whatever, they lift it up and they lay it on the branch mm -hmm. to get it more exposure mm -hmm. to the sun. Mm -hmm. And that's the primary meaning. If a branch does not bear fruit, he lifts it up. Wow. Beautiful. He takes yeah. care of it. Mm. He lifts it up and he gives it increased exposure to the sun. To himself. And every branch that continues to bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes so that it will bear more fruit. Even richer and finer fruit. All right, now... And it goes someplace that seems completely different, but it's going to come together. 2 Samuel chapter 6. You might want to turn there in your Bibles or your phone or whatever, wherever your Bible's on. Because we're going to go through some of this chapter. Again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. And David arose and went with all those who were with him. To Kiriath-Jerim. To bring up from there to Jerusalem the ark of God. Which is called by the name. The very name of the Lord of hosts who dwells enthroned above the cherubim. Mm. So the name that God gave to that ark, which, you know, on this on the surface, it just looked like a, a beautiful, gorgeous box. It was covered with gold. And it had rings on each side, just a small box with these poles uh, to be carried. And the name that was given to it mm. was the name. That box was the very presence of God to, for Israel. Mm. That was God himself. Mm. And his presence was right above that box and it had carved cherubim um, overlooking it. Mm -hmm. And the presence of God was right between those cherubim directly above that the top of the ark, which was the mercy seat. So it was, it, they called it the Lord of hosts who dwells enthroned above the cherubim. David wanted to bring it to Jerusalem. That was his heart. We want the presence of God here. Mm -hmm. We want it with us. Mm -hmm. We want it in our families. We want it in our homes. We want it in our personal life, our private life. We want it every time we get together for fellowship. Mm -hmm. One of the most disappointing things to me sometimes is when believers get together and there's no ark that you can perceive. There, there's no fellowship. It's just details of life. And David, David's heart could not tolerate that. For Jerusalem. For, for the city of, of the capital of Israel, the, the capital where God's presence was most important to be dwelling. He couldn't tolerate 
to not have the presence of God right there in Jerusalem in the, in the temple. And at first he just had a tabernacle, a temporary tent. And so he was determined to bring it there. So they placed the Ark of God on a new car. I mean, they were they were they were think they were valuing, thought they were valuing it by getting a brand new cart to put it on. That they were honoring it. And brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill, and Uzzah and Ahio, sons of Abinadab, were leading the new cart. <clears throat> Interesting. The cart, <clears throat> well, you can lead the cart. You're not supposed to lead the ark. A cart you can lead. And so that's what they were doing. They got a brand new one, and they're leading it. But the ark, the Lord of hosts himself, you don't lead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He leads you. He leads us. He's the leader. He's the focus. He's the attention. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. So Ohio was walking in front of the ark, which means Uzzah was behind it. And meanwhile, David and all the house of Israel were celebrating and dancing before the Lord with all kinds of instruments made of fir, cypress wood, with, with lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. Great rejoicing. When they came to this particular thought place, Nankin's threshing floor, Uzzah reached out with his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it. Because the oxen stumbled and nearly overturned it. And the anger of the Lord burned against Uzzah, and God struck him there for his irreverence. And he died there by the ark of God. And David became very angry and grieved and offended because of the Lord's outburst against Uzzah. And that place has been called Perez Uzzah, outburst against Uzzah to this day. So David was afraid of the Lord that day. And he said, how can the ark of the Lord come to me? I have to have it. We must have it. So he was unwilling to move the ark of the Lord into the city of David with him at that moment. So he took it aside to the house of Obed-Edom. The ark of God of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom for three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. All his family. So King David was told, the Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So it doesn't, it doesn't say this expressly, but what did he do? He had to go back to the word. What we call the Old Testament. He went back to the word and he examined, read the scriptures about where, when... When God gave the instructions for how the ark was to be built, but more than that, how it was to be carried. Yeah. Right. He went back to the word. That's what that that is the imperative step. Mm -hmm. To have the presence of God is go back to the word. Mm -hmm. And find out how to carry it. How to transport it. And he found out that the ark had rings, what those rings were for. Mm -hmm. And so they, they, they placed the poles in there because the ark was meant to be carried on the, you can say, soft shoulders of the Levites. Mm -hmm. Shoulders that would be sensitive to the weight of those poles mm. from the weight of the ark on their shoulder. They can feel the weight of the presence of God, the ark of God on their shoulders. Mm -hmm. And they, they that's the way they were to carry it. Mm -hmm. 
And once he discovered that, once he understood that, then he decided it's okay, it's blessing the house of Obed-Edom, so there's no problem with the ark. The problem was with the way we were transporting it. Right. Was it the ark itself? And he discovered how, rediscovered how the ark was to be carried on human shoulders. That is, that to me is, is, is when I say that, it's, it's, it's such an honor that God gives to us that he wants his presence to be carried on our shoulders personally. He doesn't want to be put on a, he doesn't. He doesn't care if it's a if we get a the fanciest car or limousine in the world, to get a Bentley, whatever Rolls Royce. He doesn't care anything about that. He cares about us, and he wants it on our shoulders. He wants his presence. He wants to be in direct contact with us and carried by us. That's his. That was his instructions. That's his desire. That's his prerogative. Put it this way. He wants to be hosted by us. Not by a new program. By us. So, this is very interesting. When those... Uh, so, David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with rejoicing and gladness. Now, verse 13, notice, when those who were carrying the ark of the Lord by its poles, now they're doing it the right way, mm. had gone six paces, mm. he sacrificed an ox and a fat one. What's the number six represent in the Word of God? Man. Praise your Lord. Thank you, God. Now, picture this. When they had gone six paces, they had to stop and sacrifice an ox, meaning... Six is the number of man. Every six paces, every six steps. Think about this. This was a continuous process. Yeah. Every six steps. It wasn't just one time. Mm. Every six steps they stopped and sacrificed an ox, which speaks of human strength. Every six steps they, which was the measure of man, they had to stop and, and ponder the fact that we can't do this on our own strength. We can't even carry his presence. We can't, it's not just a box. This is the presence of God. We can't do this in our own strength. And they had to sacrifice an ox and a fatling, which is the best portion of meat that could possibly be served to someone. So they were giving God their strength and saying, we can't do this. We don't know how to do this. This is the presence of God we're carrying. Who are we? But that's his choice. That was his instructions. That's what he wants. So, listen to this. I did some, I got some information and figured some things out. It was about 12 to 15 kilometers from Obed Edom's house to Zion, where they were going. That's seven, about seven and a half to 9.3 miles. So, somewhere in there, eight and a half, nine. Several miles, seven and a half to over nine miles, every six steps. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
they would stop. Mm -hmm. And they would sacrifice an ox. And, and, and the best possible portion of meat that there was to eat, they would sacrifice it to God. They were saying, we can't do this. We are so aware, without me, you can do nothing. So I, I figured this out. If it was that many miles... It's about 30,000 steps. Every six steps, they stopped and did this. Yeah, it's over 3,500, one, one person said. But it's about 5,000 times. They stopped and sacrificed an ox. And a fat one. Best portion of me. To God. Praise you, Lord. So, if, you were, if we were there, and we were watching this, and we were following along, at any point, we could look back and see a trail of blood. Of oxen, mm. of meat, mm -hmm. the best portion of meat laying on the ground just for God. Instead of, it's, it's the opposite of coming up with the best new ark and the best new program mm. in a church, for example, that we can come up with and, well, like Mary Marillo says, uh, Big screens, skinny jeans, and fog machines. <laughs> Nothing wrong with those in themselves, but that, that's just his expression. The best possible, fanciest, greatest mm -hmm. program we can come up with to, to glorify God and to draw people in. And the whole time God is saying, is this about me? You can't do anything without me. Every step has to be dependence on me. You need to know that six steps, the measure of man is as far as you can go without consciously understanding your dependence on me. Without me, you can do nothing. And then you can go another six steps. And then you depend on me. I'm everything. Without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you've got nothing. Same for healing. How do how how do how does the how do we apply the violent take it by force. We keep stopping and going to God and saying, I need to, this needs to go. But I'm not enough. This is intolerable. I cannot live with these symptoms or this disease. No, I refuse it. I was healed by Jesus' stripes. I refuse to tolerate it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. Okay, how... I'm just using this healing as in how are you going to deal with it? Mm -hmm. How are you going to overcome it? How are you going to get your healing? You go to His Word... And you get his portion. And you get his word that says, greater is he that's in you than he. I'm just, that's just one of thousands and thousands. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And you offer that to God. And you get filled 
you feast on that Lord. and you get filled with the consciousness and the awareness that, wait a minute, I'm greater. We were talking about the, the, the uh, at first we were talking about the defiance of the enemy. He doesn't, he doesn't have rules of engagement. He doesn't play by any rules of war. Or time. Yeah, he never gets tired. Mm -hmm. If I get victory in one area, just a matter of time, he'll come back to it. He'll come back and hit hit with another area. Mm -hmm. If I'm walking on with God and I'm believing Him and I'm trusting God, mm -hmm. eventually. It's going to have to get to the point where I keep offering my, an ox, I keep offering my natural strength. Absolutely. And I keep stopping and saying, Joel 3.10 says, when I am weak. And that's as far as I can go, six steps. And I, and I recognize my weakness. I can't do this in my natural strength. I can't. I can't preach another message in my natural strength. I, won't, I can't do it. It's not tolerable. When, present tense, I am weak. He is strong. Joel 3.10, let the weak who feels in the present tense his weakness say, I am now present tense strong. I am strong. Not I will be strong, I am strong. And as I, as I sacrifice those oxen and as I eat the best portion of meat, I eat the, a promise of God and another promise of God and I stay with it and I fellowship with it and it begins to grow inside the conviction begins to grow inside my heart. Greater is he that's in you. And I keep, I keep eating it and keep fellowshipping with it until that greaterness builds a conviction in my heart and then I begin to understand your, vi your violence, you're trying to cause the kingdom of heaven inside of me, health, Psalm 103. What does it say? Forget not any, I just looked it up, forget not any of my benefits. I wish above all things you'd prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. Forget not any of them. What did he say he was anointed to do in Luke 4? Mm -hmm. Cleanse the lepers. A lot of it was about healing. Yes. Raise the dead. Mm -hmm. Release people's hearing, ears to hear. Mm -hmm. Open the eyes of the blind. Set the captives free. Those that have been captured and captivated and tied up in knots by fear, spirit of fear and oppression and depression. Self-consciousness. Self-consciousness. And, and as, I, as I stop, I keep stopping. I, I don't go any further than I have the strength from God and the grace to go and I stop and I receive again from God. I sacrifice my self production capacity and I eat the finest meat. I take the best cut, the best promise that applies to me that there is until the conviction begins to grow inside of me. And I say... There's a forcefulness. The Bible calls it violent. I was looking at it yesterday. The king, same word. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence 
God's people suffered the violence of illness, for example. A symptom. Mm -hmm. Violence there is a noun. Mm -hmm. It's an activity, I mean. Mm -hmm. And the violent, <laughs> that's a noun. That's who I'm becoming. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a violence building up, a violent force building up in me that is superior to the violence that the kingdom of darkness is trying to foist on me. Because I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to, to approach this. I'm done approaching this in my own strength. I know victory's there. But I can't do it. I can't win it on my own. So I have to continually sacrifice that 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 dependence on myself and my own strength and my own capacity and my own ability and continue to feast on the word of God on promises on 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 reality 1 John 5 4 praise you Lord okay so let me finish this when David, when those who were carrying the ark of the Lord by its poles had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fat one. And David was dancing before the Lord with great enthusiasm. And David was wearing a linen ephod, a priest's upper garments. Linen in the New Old Testament, it doesn't cause sweat. So David and all the house of Israel were bringing the ark of the Lord up to the city of David with shouts of joy and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, David's wife, looked down, down from the window above. Isn't that descriptive? Human self-sufficiency, human preservation of natural dignity and pride and arrogance looks down. Looks down on the celebration of the presence of God. Because the David celebrating the presence of God after what happened with Uzzah and he was so devastated and then he went back to the word and he, he, he learned and understood how the ark was to be carried on their shoulders, and then so they did it the right way, and they and they kept in mind the whole way, all those miles, that we can't do this in our own strength. This has to be God Himself. We have to rely on Him. And now David is finally there, Zion, and the and and the. The tabernacle is in view where they're going to place it. They're coming into Zion and he is celebrating and dancing. No wonder. Dancing and leaping with all his might. And the natural mind, the natural man looks down. From a castle window. That was her identity. She was Saul's daughter. He was the king. And I am his daughter. And I have a dignity about me. It's all about her. It's all about me. It's all about my dignity and, and my presence. Really, it's about my presence versus his presence. My self-consciousness versus consciousness of him. The preservation of my dignity. My conservativeness, preserving my reputation. <coughs> and so she despised David because she thought him, she felt contempt for him in her heart because she thought him undignified. Verse 17, they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent 
which David had pitched for it, and David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And when David had finished offering the burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. That was the ark, the name of the ark. That was God's name. That was the name of his, of his presence. Mm -hmm. And distributed to all the people, the entire multitude of Israel, men and women, gave them each a loaf of bread, cake of dates, cake of raisins, and all the people departed each to his house, and David returned to bless his own household. But his wife, Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, very sarcastically, how glorious and distinguished was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself stripped off his kingly robes in the eyes of the snow. That's not how David saw it. David saw it as stripping off his kingly robes in the eyes of the Lord of hosts. That's who he was occupied with. That's what he was rejoicing about. In the eyes of his servants' maids, like one of the riffraff who shamelessly uncovers himself. That's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. So David said to Michael, it was before the Lord I did this, who chose me <coughs> above your father. Right. Mm. And all his house to appoint me as ruler over Israel, the people of the Lord. Therefore, I will celebrate in pure enjoyment mm. before the Lord. I will demean myself even more than this and will be humbled, abased in my own sight and yours. But by the maids whom you mention, by them I shall be held in honor. Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no child to the day of her death. Her womb was cursed by God that day. Because of her disrespect, her arrogance towards God, mm -hmm. towards the presence of the Lord. Jesus. Who, who or what do we value Jesus. the most? Mm -hmm. His presence. I wrote a thought down as I was studying this yesterday. Thank you, God. Cannot settle for anything less than seeing the glory of God openly revealed. He could not settle for anything less than the glory of God openly revealed in the midst of his people. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, God. It was more important than success by sight. Mm -hmm. And God would honor it. It would be blessed because God would honor it. Mm -hmm. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, God. Praise you. Thank you. David uh, said, Psalm 27, 4, One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the presence of the Lord. I may dwell in the house of the Lord. I may, His presence, that I may enjoy and experience His presence. So everything we do in relation to this house, Ross Corner Bible Church, is to enhance mm -hmm. to the maximum the hosting of his presence. What can be done to attract his presence? What can be done to host his presence? If he's here in power and glory, 
and the more power and glory that is manifested through us, with through Him, from Him. That's success. And God honors, God will honor it. David ended up with the greatest, the greatest kingdom. It, it, it's, it's the seed of the seed form of the kingdom of God. The best new ox cart will never be enough to carry the glory of God. That's true. Doesn't matter how beautiful it is, doesn't matter what, how much money's gone into it, doesn't matter how much planning. It will never be good enough to carry the glory of God. It's us. He wants us. He wants, he wants his presence to be carried by us. He wants his healing power to be released through us. He wants his authority to be over, over, over pain, over sickness, over disease to be released through us. He wants us to be a hub of healing. Because that is one of his names. I am the Lord that heals you. Mm -hmm. Yahweh Rapha. But I want I want to be carried on your shoulders, and I want my presence and my healing power to be released through you, you through your faith, your hunger, your desire. Praise you, Lord. Second Timothy one nine, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Do you know why Moses got to know God's ways? Why the Bible says that he God made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel? What's the difference? When 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 Jesus cursed the fig tree in Mark 11, Um, you know, he went up to the fig tree, he wanted some food, he saw nothing but leaves, so he cursed it. No one will ever eat fruit from you again. Next day, they're walking again with his, he's walking again with his disciples, and I'm sure they're kind of suggesting and, you know, kind of manipulating, let's go this way, let's go this way, because they want to go by the tree and see what happened, and what the result of Jesus cursing it was. And, of course, Peter spoke out right away. Lord, look, the tree which you cursed is withered. And Jesus' response was so interesting. It always seems like he's coming from somewhere else in response to a statement or a question. He comes from somewhere else. This is his response. Have faith in God constantly. Continually. So let's let's turn to closing to Mark 11. This is what I want to say. That what happened to that fig tree was an event. It was one of his acts. Peter saw it and brought it up because. Hey, this is a talking point. This is a very interesting thing that happened. This is this is a curiosity fulfiller. We got a talking point. We need. We. I want to talk about this. What's going? What happened with this? Instead, Jesus didn't want it to be the the withering of the trick fig tree because he cursed it. He didn't want it to be the talking point for the day. He wanted them to learn one of his ways. 
He wanted them to learn something much deeper than just talking about, hey, you know, half the night I can see him. Hey, can you imagine? What, what in the world? What do you think about that? So, Mark eleven twenty one. Remembering, of course he remembered. He couldn't think about anything else. Peter said to him, Rabbi, Master, look, the fig tree which you cursed is withered. Jesus replied, have faith in God constantly, continually. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, here's what he wants to get across, one of his ways. In Exodus 33, one of Moses' prayers was, show me your ways. I want to know your ways. And if you don't, if you're not going to go with us, I'm not going. I'm not going without you. I can't do it. So show me your ways. And Jesus wanted to show his disciples one of his ways here. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea. And does not doubt in his heart in God's unlimited power, but believes that what he says is going to take place, it will be done for him. He wanted them to understand that what he did to the fig tree when he cursed it and it withered from the roots is he wants them to have faith in God continually so they, they're going to have mountains. They're going to have mountains in their lives. He's going to ascend to heaven and they're going to face mountains. Just like we are, just like this whole, the whole vine all over the world is facing mountains of influence in every culture and every nation that need to be spoken to, need to be overcome. Have faith in God continually because you're going to have mountains and I want you, this is what I want you to learn from it. Whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart in God's unlimited power, but believes that what he says is going to take place. It will be done for him in accordance with God's will. For this reason, I'm telling you, whatever things you ask for in prayer in accordance with God's will, believe with confident trust that you have received them and they will be given to you. Praise you, Lord. So he wants, not only, not only did they sacrifice an ox, a statement of, we can't do this. A continual statement. Up to 5,000 times. Consciously making this statement by sacrificing an ox. We can't do this on our own. Seems like a simple thing. Take the poles, pick them up, put them on your shoulders. We can't carry the presence of God inside of us on our own. There was that continual reminder. Have faith in God continually. And at the same time, they sacrificed the ox. They sacrificed their natural strength. They were also fellowshipping with the best cut of meat, the best spiritual protein there was. Wow. And two sides to it. Every, every six steps, there were two things. They were sacrificing their dependence on themselves. We can't do it. At the same time, they're picking up the most incredible portion of meat that there is and eating, eating Jesus' flesh, eating the power of God, eating the word of God, eating, feasting, 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 feasting. They have to go together. If I'm not going to depend on myself, what well, I got to take something in. I got to take something in that's supernatural. I got to take something in that has absolute overcoming power. I got to take something in that's, that says greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world because there's some there's an entity in the world that is trying to cause the kingdom of heaven to suffer violence and it's after me and every time 
I take six more steps, it's after me still. It's relentless and coming after me, so I've got to continually feast on what keeps me, makes me stronger, more powerful. The one that's in me. Praise you, Lord. Romans 8. Romans 8, 35. Who shall ever separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword... Just as it is written and forever remains written, for your sake we are put to death all day long. We're regarded as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors. Isaiah 60, darkness is covering the earth. Everything's shaking. Darkness is covering the earth. What else does it say? Rise Shine, for the glory of God has come upon you. Mm -hmm. The answer is the glory of God. Mm -hmm. The answer is the glory of His presence. The answer is His power. The answer is His greater power, His superiority. Greater is greater, greater, greater. Let's say that, just that word, greater. Greater. Greater is He that's in you. Greater is he that is in you. Always, he's always greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. So Jesus was saying to the disciples, the answer is in you. I don't want your attention drawn to, they're always doing that. You know, Peter, James, and John are in Mount of Transfiguration, and Moses and Elijah, Wow! Let's build three tabernacles. This is great. You know, this is unbelievable. We should stay here the rest of our lives. I wish we could do that. Yeah. Not there. Boom! Boom! A voice from heaven. <laughs> Cloud overshadows them and they can't see anything. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him! Cloudless. Those lights are gone. It's Jesus. He's the one. He's the true father. He's the authority. He's the presence. He's the one I need. He's the fat one. He is the fat one that I eat. And I get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And I start speaking back to the mountain and speaking back to the devil and speaking back to the symptoms and speaking back to the illness and speaking back to the disease and speaking back to whatever he is trying to cause me to suffer violence. Speaking back with him with superior violence. It's a spiritual violence. It's a boldness. And how did I how, how do I how, how do I get there and how do I I don't even want to say, how do I get there? How do I live there? How do I wear it? How do I wear it? Yeah. Constantly. Yeah. Six steps. Can't do this. I know I can't do this. Here's your oxen. That represents my natural strength. But here's also a fat one. Here's... Jesus, here's the word of God. Here's the presence of God. Here's the word. Here's his power. It makes me greater than he that's in the world. It makes me more than a conqueror. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. And we can speak to those mountains. You be removed and you be cast into the sea. And 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 how do, how does how does that work that does not doubt in his heart? How is that possible? Because he said it, so it's possible, but how is that possible? The way it's possible is how they brought the ark of God. Keep stopping. Keep stopping and be aware. 
can't do this on my own, but I'm going to feast on it. I'm going to feast on the Word. I'm going to feast on His promises. I'm going to get filled with it. I'm going to get filled with it. It's going to strengthen. It's going to, I'm going to get stronger and stronger and stronger until I can turn around and say, speak to the mountain myself. That is one of God's ways. That's what Moses learned. That's why it says he made his ways known unto Moses. Children of Israel just saw the axe. They saw the water come out of the rock. They saw the Red Sea divide. But they never got to know his ways. If I'm going to get to know his ways and, and be one of his ways, walk in his ways, have faith in God continually. I have to learn and it's a deep, deep, deep rooted lesson. I'm not sufficient for this. I don't have any other source. You either give it to me or I don't have it. In myself, I'm bankrupt. But you have a constant fat lane waiting for me, ready for me. If I seek it out. I can get stronger and stronger and feast and feast and feast and feast and feast and feast feast until I can overcome and I can have faith in God continually myself, Mm -hmm. ourselves. And we can speak to those mountains and say, be lifted up and be thrown into the sea. The kingdom of God has arrived. The kingdom of God is on the scene. The presence of God himself is rich inside of us. It is him you're going to have to deal with. Not me and my flesh, not any new car I can come up with. Himself. Praise you. Let's get ready for communion. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Glory to God. John chapter 6. And verse 51. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he leaves in me. He will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews began to argue with one another, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And Jesus said to them, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, unless you believe in me as Savior and believe in the saving power of my blood, which will be shed for you, you do not have life in yourselves. Unless you sacrifice your self-sufficiency and your natural strength, and you understand, you you live in awareness, it's not enough, it will never be enough. And you totally rely on me. David had to have the ark in Zion. It was the secret to the success of his entire kingdom. The one who eats my flesh, verse 54, and drinks my blood, believes in me, accepts me as Savior, has eternal life, now possesses it. I will raise him up from the dead on the last day, for my flesh is true spiritual food and my blood is true spiritual drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood believes in me. I just want to stop right there. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood. 
when Michelle and I recently have had communion, I just, this thought keeps coming to me. Jesus referred to whatever it is. Could be a gummy, could be a piece of matzo bread, could be whatever symbolizes his flesh. But he said, unless you eat my flesh. Disease cannot exist in his flesh. Never did while he was on the earth. The only time he experienced the pain of disease was when his back was being shredded. And Psalms 22 says they plowed deep furrows across his back. They cut deep into his flesh and ripped it up. Just like plowing a field. The only time he experienced anything to do with pain of disease and suffering was that period of time right there. So he could take it away. He could take it on himself and take it away. And he referred to communion as eating his flesh. So I thought, okay, his flesh is perfect. There's no disease in it. When I eat his flesh, which is perfect with no disease, no symptoms of any kind, I am enhancing my own health. I'm taking in perfect health, perfect flesh. His. There is no disease in heaven. There are none of those, none of the, none of the symptoms that we experience on the earth are in heaven. I just think of it as I'm eating his flesh right now. And that's spiritual perfect, perfect, perfect nutrition. The choicest meat. The fat one going into my body. So Lord, thank you right now as we eat this for our health. We, we agree with you to forget not any, not one of your benefits, including prosperity. I want to study that more and more mm -hmm. coming up because it's one of his benefits. He said, don't forget any of my benefits. Mm -hmm. Shalom mm -hmm. on every side, in every detail, every aspect of our lives, relationally, physically, financially, blessing. I wish above all things, there are many benefits. And health is one of them. The two primary things he said, when he said, don't forget any of my benefits, who forgives all your iniquities by his precious blood, who heals all your diseases. So we take this perfect flesh of the Son of God into our mouths right now, and we eat it for our own nourishment and enhancement of our own bodies and our own health. Thank you so much in Jesus' name. Praise you, Lord. Thank you for your blood. Who forgives all our iniquities? That is the only sufficient answer to the accuser of the brethren. Who never rests, never stops. Accuse, 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 accuse. accuse. That's all he does. <coughs> you're this, you're that, you're not this, you're not that, you're not sufficient. This look at this failure. Look. Regret, 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 regret. Shame, 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 shame. He's terrified that we'll break loose of it. Mm -hmm. Glory God. He's got to work as hard as he can, like a blabbermouth. Mm -hmm. Never lets up to keep us in bondage. Because if we ever get loose mm -hmm. and we ever break out of that, the violent are going to take his kingdom by force. Thank you, Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord. God. Praise you. Thank Lord. you for that, for your blood, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. It's sprinkled on the mercy seat mm -hmm. of that ark in heaven right now. Mm -hmm. 
and it's yours, your literal, physical Thank blood. You, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for shedding it. Build us up in the nourishment of it so that we can speak to the mountain of guilt, the mountain of shame, the mountain of regret, be lifted up and thrown into the sea. And buried forever. Praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name. He said, drink all of it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Majesty. Worship his majesty unto Jesus. Be all glory, power, and praise. Majesty, worship his majesty. Kingdom, he came from his throne unto his own. Let his anthem reign. Majesty. Worship his majesty unto Jesus be all glory, honor, and praise. Majesty, kingdom authority. Testimony. Glory. 
or a question. Lord, Lord. Thank you, God. I have testimony. Okay. Yesterday, uh, we went and visited a friend in the rest home. The name is Raymond Mercia. Dear friend of ours. <coughs> and the Lord put it on my heart to pray over him, anoint him. Because he had been having visions and seeing people in his room. And mm. He came up and went to speak to them. Well, John it. and I have been up. Again, to pray and proclaim that this morning, the, the prayer, I mean, the scripture we just read, that uh, when it's, as Jesus spoke to the fig tree, it's if you believe and have faith. So I'm believing that this is a place in life, God is going to step his faith Amen. on his son. Because I spoke to, as I laid my hands on this, no longer are you going to be here. Visions and people and these no. fears that come along, no longer in the state, room, in that whole place. Mm -hmm. And God will send also minister of angels to you. Mm -hmm. So that's my prayer. And the other thing is that I'm going to see another dear friend who has gone away from the Lord and he doesn't believe in Jesus anymore. I'm going with God's power and his strength. Oh, okay. Knowing that God is sending me to these places. And then he's also put me in a place where I work, where I'm yeah. discipling a young girl. Yeah. God has been doing mighty works. So he's just praying for his presence. Thank you. Yeah. you know, we've got to recognize his presence mm -hmm. when he's doing things in our lives. Thank you, you might Lord. think it's in the natural, but I tell you what. It's in the spirit realm yeah. that God brings sure, his presence. Yeah. And it's still, <coughs> I mean, she's been full of joy, this young lady mm -hmm. has worked. She will laugh out loud at the Lord. I, I've never seen this before. It's uncomfortable for me, but it's you. Mm -hmm. And I want truth to come into her. Amen. Truth that she's not Amen. here from anyone else, from anything that's unknown, mm -hmm. but it's from Father's name. Mm -hmm. So this is my testimony that God is doing my work. He's yeah. been doing that all along. Amen. But Beautiful. Many times if we don't share it, in the end we just don't like this. Mm -hmm. That's right. So I've been attacked physically, yeah. emotionally, yeah. Absolutely. relational. But God is faithful mm -hmm. as you stand, as you said. Men cannot live by bread alone, and I keep saying it, but by every word that you mm -hmm. see is from his mouth. Mm -hmm. He's the fact. And yes, he's the word. He's the living word to me, and I spoke this before, and I see it again. He said to me years ago, the word becomes flesh on his life. Mm -hmm. That means to me, his word, his flesh, right. becomes real and living mm -hmm. on the inside of me. No man can take those things from any of us when God does that work in us. Mm -hmm. So I just pray for mm -hmm. him. Amen. Be very mindful this week of what yes. you are praying about Ooh, yeah. mm -hmm. and speaking to. Yeah. And ask God. Mm -hmm. you, you'll, it's an interesting question. Yeah. And I've experienced it in many different ways. Yeah. When you give him permission, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. to teach you the difference of what you should be speaking yeah. to mm -hmm. and what you have been praying about, been frustrated about, yeah. been bored about, because yeah. you need to speak. Yeah. Have you ever, have you ever, like, okay, I'm going to do that. Have you ever spoken to something I have Michelle has, we have as we've talked about it and sense that it's kind of falling to the ground mm -hmm. absolutely yes and so what I'm learning is I mean it sounds so obvious but <laughs> Getting into going into the word and feeding and feeding and feeding and yeah. feeding and feeding and feeding and feeding and feeding until you begin to sense this inner forcefulness yeah. that's greater, Amen. greater, yeah. an authority Amen. that is greater Amen. than the symptom, yeah. than the voices. Eight or nine miles they went. That was amazing yeah, today. 
That was amazing. I've yes. never heard that before. Long that was trail. How, how many days? Yeah, how many days? Yeah. How many? No wonder he's dancing at the end. <laughs> it was the like, only. All of that protein. <laughs> all, all of that protein. <laughs>